All right, we're back on the feeding grounds with the completed key, thanks to the dwarves. So, let's go see the dragon firmatrix and free her. I'm sure she'll be happy to see us. We have the key. Ah, excellent. Please don't stand there. Unlock my chains and be sure to get all of the locks. Ah. I don't normally like to use fadeovers in the, these videos because with all the identical backgrounds, Stone Keep's levels can be confusing enough, especially in a video. But since I'll have to do a lot of backtracking in this particular video, I don't think you have to be subjected to all of that. And there we go. Thank you, human. I am in your debt. You're welcome. I was happy to help. I must leave now. To fly the sky again is my greatest dream. A dream that you have helped to fulfill. We dragons always carry some treasure with us, no matter where we go. That is yours to keep. I will never forget this, and my kind have long memories. Ah, you may consider yourself a dragon friend, and someday I will repay your kindness. Ah. Good flying, Vermatrix. And so, Vermatrix has vacated the feeding grounds. This opens up some territory behind where the dragon used to be. Unfortunately, looks like we won't be following her outside. And she leaves behind some, well, by now entirely useless coins and gems. I'll just pick them up because they're shiny. A health potion and a chest. Interesting. Let's see what that contains. potion and some coins and some scrolls this rune is called the rune of wind it was developed to dust a wizard's castle but is used more often as a weapon here we have another attack spell like the firebolt rune but a little different i'll show off how it works very soon Well, of course, this spell I already found in the sewers. In case I missed it there, I would have found it now. This rune will heal wounds in most conditions. It has been found useful as a cure for poison, especially. Very useful. And this is basically an improvement on the healing rune that I found in the second level. Aside from healing more health than the first rune, it also cures poison and sickness and weakness. So that's useful for dealing with poison effects or spell effects from enemies. So I'll start using this uh, rune of greater healing instead of my old healing rune. And I'll use the rune of winds on uh, the next enemy I come across. Just inscribe that one. And this one. All right, let's keep exploring this new territory. Another stray coin. These remaining locks help give you an idea of where you are. Why, it's a couple more fire spitting plants. Let's take care of those with the flame room. Works quite well. Yeah, but not on this one, since it's in the corner of the uh, square. And the Rune of Winds isn't doing much either, so let's just go in for a melee. Oh, on the ceiling here, 
an empty wasp hive that the developers probably disabled. And at the end of this long winding corridor, there's a pit. This pit actually drops into the first level of the feeding grounds. To be exact, it drops really close to the entrance to the Dwarven Clan Hall. So if you want to get there quick, this is kind of a shortcut. Coin. A good healing root lying on the ground. Oh, look, we have company. One final frog to take care of. And the chance to see the Rune of Winds in action. Oh, my Throggy. Strangers to abuse me. Great Throggy, I exist only to be abused. Well then, abuse me, I say. Okay, let's make this whiny frog's head spin. The Rune of Winds does damage and it also sometimes spins the enemy in place, preventing them from landing any attacks of their own. It's not really that spectacular or useful though. Well, it looks like that rune actually softened him up quite a bit. Not bad. Like I said, they really start throwing those meta runes at you at this point in the game. Really want to make sure that you find all of them. Of course, I already found this one in the Dwarven Fortress, along with all of the others. These remaining corridors behind the dragon aren't all that spectacular. And there won't be that much combat. But there's still a few interesting things to find out. There's the lock that was on the hind leg of the dragon. And here we have a doorway. Gonna take a quick moment here to inscribe the flame rune because it's gonna have some use in a couple of seconds. And behind a door, a stairway leading down back into the first level of the feeding grounds, an area I haven't visited before. Here we have some quite big fire spinning plants, which are positioned perfectly in the center of the tile for a flame spell. Toasty! And here we have a chest, with a scroll lying, I guess, out in the open. Again, trying to make sure I find all those meta runes. Ah, another piece. And a third piece of something of dwarven manufacture, as my journal calls it. I think it's high time to find out why Dahmer was interested in these things. Also a super healing potion, and some other familiar potions. Alright. Let's get back upstairs. And explore a little more of this corridor. Impassable collapse. Another one of those inactive wasp hives in the ceiling. I guess playtesters really didn't like those things. Probably would have been pretty annoying with all the constant buzzing sounds. Let's make quick work of this fire spitting plant. Alright, be prepared for a surprise. So, who would have guessed? A Sharga joins our company. Scuzz. Scuzz has some interesting parallels to my dwarf companions, but he's a little bit different. He can use a dagger, a sword, and a pole arm. But the type of sword he can use is only the Sharga or Throg type swords. So, like the one he's using now. 
Scuzz is wearing leather armor, which is pretty weak at this level, but he can't actually wear chainmail or the dwarven plate mail. I guess because he's not strong enough to carry his weight. So for now, his leather armor will have to do. Like I said, Scuzz can use frog swords or sharga swords, and his skill with daggers is actually best, but the most effective weapon for him to use is probably the spear. And I have a really good stone spear in my inventory, so let's give that to him. This weapon gives him a lot of reach, which makes him much more effective in combat. I'd also better give him a good helm. Protect that little green noggin. Alright, cool. Now, over here we have another door, which actually leads into one of the next levels. But we're not gonna go in there just yet. Instead, I'm gonna proactively drop another translocation circle here. So I'll be able to come back here quickly in the near future. Because I have something I want to do first, which is backtrack to that hole I mentioned earlier, and drop back down into the Dwarven Fortress. Just gonna give everyone a feather fall rune so we don't take any damage from the fall. And here we are back on the first level of the feeding grounds. Let's head into the Dwarven Fortress and give those pieces of Dwarven manufacture to Domber. Of course, Scuzz wouldn't really fit in with the dwarves. Drake kind of says that as if he's planning on killing someone in here. Anyway, Scuzz stays and waits for you in the corridor. Let's head on in. Hey guys. Luckily Dahmer is not far from the entrance. Well, what do you want? It's me. I'm looking for your secret weapon. Shh! Don't tell anybody about that. It's a secret. And it's in pieces. It's a bunch of secret pieces, I guess. Oh, I remember you. You're looking for it. Dahmer, still kind of a dick. Okay, the way to go about giving him these pieces is to wait for him to walk up to you and trigger him asking for it. Like so. Do you have one of the pieces? Sometimes it can be surprisingly difficult to trigger this. Yes, this is part of the project. All right, that's one. Ah, yes. Now that should have worked. The inner problem is resolved when the outer tincture... Uh, oh, oh, what was I talking about? All right, let's try and give him the rest of the pieces. Do you have one of the pieces? This is going well. Yes, yes! This is another piece to the stone shooter! The stone shooter, huh? Alright, let's try and give him the last piece. Do you have one of the pieces? I sure do, but let's see what happens when you try to give him something else. This has nothing to do with the secret project! He's a dick and throws it in your face. All right. Let's try and trigger him again. Do you have one of the pieces? No more fooling around. Let's give it to him. Ah, the final piece! Go away while I assemble my masterpiece. Return later and it will be ready for you. So Dahmer goes over to his table and stays there for about a full minute or so. And when he finishes... Ah, uh, there you are. I have finished this up. I would have come looking for you, but something important? Well, something... Well... I entrust the stone shooter, the ultimate weapon of destruction, into your hands. Oh, awesome. There we go. I'll just put some stones into it right now. Now this is the whole reason why I didn't want to put all of my stones into the throwing bag that I found on the first level. I wanted to keep them separate for the stone shooter. 
You need these instructions too. Ah, uh, a real man doesn't read instructions, but I'll bring them anyway. You know, Jake, there is something that bothers me about you. You're a little tall for a dwarf. You know that? Ah, yes, I uh, uh, had uh, tall parents. Oh, that would explain it. Well, I'm a busy dwarf, and busy dwarves are busy, you know. Yes, thank you, Domber. All right, goodbye, Domber. We're never going to see you again. Ah. Okay, let's head back to the feeding grounds. But first, make sure to pick up Scuzz. Welcome back, buddy. Okay. This is, of course, why I dropped that translocation circle. Back we go. Alright. Let's see if we can find someone to uh, try out the stone shooter on. Nothing yet. Who? One lonely frog shaman. Uh, best read the instructions first. Stones, point it where you want to shoot. Pull trigger. Repeat as necessary. Seems clear enough. There we go. The stone shooter. It's called the stone shooter because it shoots stones. You think you are so tough? You kill my people and defile our temple. Yes, I've heard of your actions. You will pay for what you have done. You are servants of Kul Kun. But I can find it in my heart to let you go if you promise to leave us alone. No, what you have done cannot be ignored. Well, okay then. All right, let him have it. It's not doing a lot. It doesn't seem to be hurting him at all, actually. Dumber. All right, so the stone shooter absolutely sucks. You probably should never use it at all, ever. Uh, let's just use our sword against this green son of a bitch. Well, that seems to work a lot better. Down he goes. Dropping a useless broken rune staff and a scroll. This meta rune for an increase of time. Well, that's just about all of the meta runes available. Let's not forget to pick up my rocks. Well, that's just about the end of the second level of the feeding grounds. A little more to explore ahead, but we're nearly done. Nothing else on the ground here but rocks, and I don't even have the energy to pick all of them up. A chest, which contains a couple more mushrooms. Nice. And it, uh, some frog poop. Great, now I have to wash my hands again. Hmm. At the end of the corridor dead end over there, but another chest with some, ooh, coins. And another scroll. Interesting. Yet another scroll that talks about the fairy realm and the fairies and is not actually read by Drake's voice actor. Again, I think these scrolls were put in because playtesters complained that the fairy realm is just so goddamn hard to find. That is the next level where I'm headed, and I'll show you just how obscure it is to find the entrance. Certainly stumped me and my brother for a long time. So here's the wall where the glowing purple things keep disappearing. And close to here we found a crop of randomly growing primroses. Well. If you put a primrose down in front of this wall, the way to the fairy realm opens. 
How the hell were you supposed to figure this out on your own? Oh well, see you in the next one, I guess.